Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Yes, we're still doing this book. The nice thing is it's not all connected. So it's okay if you watch out of order. It's okay if you miss episodes. Please don't miss episodes. Please watch us. We like it when you comment on our reading of stories. So this is another installment of My Bedtime Book of Two Minute Stories, edited by Rosemary Garland. Illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories are Busy Timmy Tug by Margaret Connor and The Lucky Donkey, also by Margaret Connor. Ooh, another doubleheader. Busy Timmy Tug. The big ocean liner was impatient to be off on her voyage round the world. She felt just as excited as her passengers, for she had never been all round the world before. I wish they'd hurry up and come aboard, she said to herself. I wish they'd pull up the gangways and start up my engines. Hello, called Timmy Tug as he darted by. The big liner didn't answer. She felt much too grand to talk to tiny tugs. Silly little things, she muttered, always bustling here, there, and everywhere. Hello, called Timmy Tug again as he darted back. We'll soon be off now. I'm nearly ready. Huh muttered the big liner. Does he think he's coming with me? Huh. Back in a minute, called Timmy Tug as he bustled by once more. Don't bother yourself, said the big liner. I'll be leaving any minute now. Sure enough, it did look as if all the passengers had come aboard for the gangways were being removed. Hurrah! Now perhaps they will start up my engines, cried the big liner. She loved the thump thump of her big powerful engines. They made her feel as though she could cut the waves in half, just slice through them like that. And what a lovely wash she made as she cut through the water. Ah, she was moving. But what was that moving along with her? Pulling her. Goodness, it was that silly little tug. Did they really think he was going to pull her out to sea? She was cross. She felt so silly being pulled along by a tiny tug. Was there something wrong with her? Was that little tug going to pull her all round the world? And then she heard a sailor talking to some children. Useful little things, tugs, he said. We couldn't get in or out of the harbor without them. Why not? asked a small boy. Because our engines are too powerful, said the sailor. We'd set up such a wash that we'd swamp everybody in the harbor. We'd be in real disgrace then. Oh, murmured the liner softly. I hadn't thought of that. She didn't want to be in disgrace for upsetting other people. Oh dear, no. And she began to be thankful to the tug for saving her from doing so. So she said thank you very politely to Timmy Tug when at last they reached the open sea. It was a pleasure, said Timmy Tug. I hope you will have a lovely voyage. How kind of you, shouted back the liner. She had to shout because her engines were whirring and making such a noise. And Timmy Tug moved so quickly, he was already halfway back to the wharf. I hope we will meet again when I come home, called the liner. They did. Timmy Tug was there to pull her back into the harbor. She wanted to tell him all her adventures, but he was too busy to stop long enough to hear them. But when his work was finished for the day, he managed to slip alongside her and whisper, Now, tell me all about your adventures. So they talked together under the stars, the big liner and Timmy Tug. When they'd finished talking, Timmy Tug looked up at her and said respectfully, You must feel very grand. No, said the big liner, I don't. And she meant it. Without your help, Timmy Tug, I could never have started on my adventure, she said. And she was right, wasn't she? Well, this is cute. Art's cute too. It's very realistic. But there's like spots where they put in eyes and a mouth. Like on this large two-page shot, you can see on the tugboat a little bit of a mouth right there on the front. You would think it would be on the bow part of the boat, but it's actually on the cabin where you would sit or stand if you were the tugboat captain. And the eyes on the ocean liner mm -hmm. are way up high on like the top row just below the main stack. But other than that, it's all realistically rendered, very nicely done, and 
once again, I'm not quite sure about the story's meaning, but this one actually feels more connected and whole compared to the other ones that feel kind of soft in their meaning. And I'm pretty sure this is like, be polite, don't be too full of yourself, but... Yeah, you definitely have don't be too full of yourself because the liner thinks she's so grand and she's looking down on the tugboat who performs an extremely useful function and one that's actually important not just to the wharf as a whole but to her personally. So there's don't disregard others' abilities, don't look down on those who do work that is different from yours, and don't be too full of yourself or too proud of yourself. Hmm. All right, enough moralizing. Next story. Yeah, next? The Lucky Donkey. Dolly the donkey was tired of her job. It was not very interesting pulling a junk man's cart round the streets all day long, and not very pleasant in the winter when it was wet. But there was one thing Dolly disliked more than anything else. It was getting her feet wet. Whoever loaded her cart was, she would step to one side rather than walk through a puddle. Then one day, something happened to brighten Dolly's dull life. A new family moved into the big white house she passed every morning. There was a little boy in the family called Andy. He quickly made friends with Dolly. He was playing in the garden when he first saw her. Look at that lovely donkey, mother! He shouted as Dolly came along the street. Dolly was surprised to hear him call out. She stopped by the gate and peered through at him. Nobody had ever called her a lovely donkey before. Because she wasn't really a lovely donkey. She was too thin and her coat wasn't well groomed because Mick, her master, was always too tired at the end of the day to bother much with her. So after she'd had her supper, he always hurried off to get his supper. Still, to young Andy, she was lovely. Let's give her something to eat, he said to his mother. Mick said Dolly liked thistles. Oh, we have plenty of them in the garden, laughed Andy's mother. They picked her some thistles and Dolly ate every one. Goodbye, we'll give you some more tomorrow called Andy when Mick said they must be getting along now. From then on, Dolly looked forward to stopping by the gate of the big white house and having her lunch of thistles. Even if it was raining, Andy would be watching at the window and would run out with a big umbrella over his head and a bunch of thistles in his hand. Here's your lunch, Dolly, he'd call as he ran down the path. Then one day, Mick had some sad news for Andy. I'm giving up work because I'm too old, he told him, so I shall have to sell Dolly. Andy was upset. Could we buy Dolly? He asked his daddy that evening. We have nowhere to keep her, said his daddy. Our garden is not big enough. Uncle Jim has plenty of room on his farm, said Andy. He could keep her there and we could see her on weekends. Daddy said he'd think about it. He did think about it, and he did more than that. He went to see Uncle Jim, who had lots of room on his farm for a donkey. And Uncle Jim said the donkey could come and live on one of his fields. So Daddy bought Dolly. Everyone was delighted. Mick was pleased because he knew Dolly was going to a good home. Dolly was excited when she arrived on the farm and saw the lovely green field and her comfortable little donkey shed. And Andy was glad that he'd thought about it because he was able to learn to ride Dolly round the field. Every weekend he came to ride her. I hope you're not lonely when we're not here, he'd say to her. How could she ever be lonely? On a farm? When Andy was not with her, she had chickens to keep her company. And ducks waddling about in her field. And cows calling over the hedge. She could never be lonely. I'm a lucky donkey, she kept saying to herself. And she was a lovely donkey too. Because she was not thin anymore and her coat was always well-groomed. Andy saw to that, with the help of Uncle Jim. My memory's probably shot, but you reacted to the name of the farmer. Uncle Jim? Yeah, I don't, I don't recognize it. No, no, that was just me playing off of... Uncle Jim has plenty of room on his farm! Ah, going to the arts. The two color artists did a really nice job with this one. Lots of blending of the black and the reddish orange color on this one to create lots of nice shading and texturing. You really don't notice it until you really look at it. You would almost think this is a full color one because it's reasonable for the ground to be that kind of muddy color. 
It's reasonable for a donkey to be brown. It's reasonable for an umbrella to be black. It's very nicely done. Texturing, detail, line work, all very nicely done. So what did you think of the story? Cute. I really don't like that Mick, her master, was always too tired at the end of the day to bother much with her. The donkey pulls your cart. She's part of your livelihood. You should care well for her. But they don't portray him as a bad master, just a... Yeah, I'm tired too. Like, you only had to walk behind the cart all day. She had to pull it. And avoid mud puddles. Which apparently is especially important if you're not getting well groomed, because why add splashes on top of everything else? It, you know, you really have to wonder sometimes at children's story logic. Yes, I'm giving up work because I'm too old, so I shall have to sell Dolly. How does that even equate? You're retiring because you're too old, and you'll have to sell the donkey. Maybe you can't afford the donkey at that point. You know, because taking care of another living creature costs money. But it's basically one of those one-sentence plot twists. Ah. Uh. But very gorgeously illustrated, and it does have a happy ending. And on to the poem. This is the story of Tommy White, who didn't know his left hand from his right. He pushed a lever inside his truck, pushed it so hard that it stuck. The back of his truck went down thud and covered his friend all over with mud. It's a fun one. It's even got the illustration of the dump truck dumping all over his friend. Who looks very upset, but Tommy White is smiling, so go figure. Yeah, he didn't realize what he was doing. <laughs> He's probably not going to be very happy once he goes, Oh, sorry. Um, don't suppose you'd help me put that back into the truck, would you? <laughs> I have two shovels. So, interesting to have two stories by Margaret Connor in a row. It seemed to be, well, Busy Timmy Tug had more of a moral. Lucky Donkey, not so much. I mean, unless you look at the fact that mm, Dolly worked hard her whole life and she got rewarded. Hmm. But still, both very nice stories. Quite. Peeking ahead a little bit. Because <laughs> I can. Uh, there's still a few favorites scattered around here. But those will have to wait for another time. Also, I just caught a picture at the very beginning of the book. Did this thing really cost 50 cents? Um, at a yard sale, yes. Okay. Just thought I'd make sure. Yeah, so it, I believe it's still going for about the same price on Amazon. <laughs> Though hopefully in better condition than this. This does not look like a book I would have owned. Yeah, all of her books look new. Except for some of the kids' ones which were bought secondhand. But anything that was bought new looks new. Except for some of the kids' books and 99% of the used books that I've purchased. I can't do anything if I wasn't the first one to get my hands on them. This has been my bedtime book of two-minute stories, edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories were Busy Timmy Tug and The Lucky Donkey, both by Margaret Connor. Thank you for listening. You guys still really need an outro. There's lots of other entries of my bedtime book of two-minute stories. It's not a chronological set of stories. Pick and choose. Grab what sounds interesting. Don't feel like two-minute stories. We have lots of other stories. There's also some pop culture stuff on the main channel with pretty pictures that move because they're a time lapse of a drawing. Uh, haven't picked up a copy of this book yet? Check for an Amazon link. Feel like shopping? Check the Ebates link. Standard disclaimer, Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. You guys really still need to hear me say that. Thanks again for listening. <laughs>